Now, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to John chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 13 through 17. John chapter 2. Are you happy today? Well, while you're finding your scripture, let me tell you a little joke I heard. I was at the hospital. Matter of fact, we keep Brother Jason Salinas in prayer. I was going to minister on him in the message probably. But I think he got up the other morning, probably yesterday I'm thinking. And he was crawling on the floor and couldn't breathe. If I'm not mistaken, he's somewhere around over 40. Am I right? I believe he is. If he's not in, he's in his late 30s. Has a family, kids, couldn't breathe. Ambulance came. He called his daughter from what I heard. He's at Providence, was in ICU. And we uh, were able to pray for him. And I got up there to the hospital. It looked like everybody from the Alamo was there. Come on. And uh, Gonzalez family, Selena's family. And look at your neighbor and say a lot of cousins. Come on. I mean, it was packed. So we had a good fellowship. We prayed. And then I heard this morning, he awoke. Shall praise the Lord. And, you know, they're going to run some tests. They're assuming it was an asthma attack. They're not sure. Look at your neighbor and say it was the devil. Come on. Put a name on it, but it's always the devil that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So keep him in prayer, the whole family. Now what I want to tell you about what I heard the other day, and I said this up there, and it was the fact that the telephone rang at the church office. Secretary answered it. Somebody say secretary. And all of a sudden, this stranger said, ma'am, I want to talk to the head hog of the trough. She said, what? He said, I want to talk to the head hog of the trough. She said, sir, this is a church. And I hope you're not talking about our pastor. Because we love him and we honor him. And he interrupted. He said, ma'am, he said, all I wanted to do was talk to him and give him a $30,000 donation to the building fund. And she said, what? He said, $30,000. He can do with it whatever he wants to do. And all of a sudden, she said, wait a minute. I just heard a car door slam out front. And I think Porky's walking in the door. Okay. Well, I, we could use the $30,000. And let me say this, God's moving on the HVAC, I heard. Talked to Brother Adam's brother, I believe, the other day. He's checking on that. But if you haven't gotten one of those green envelopes right on the table, the ushers will give you one if you can't find it. The $300 donations toward that building fund, we're going to start it as quick as we can. I think we got a little over $5,000 already raised. Give God praise for that. Come on, you did that. God spoke to me this morning said there's one person in this place that could pay for the whole thing. So maybe you'll come up to me after church and hand me a check for 25000 You say, you're crazy. No, I'm not crazy. God has people that want to help the things of God. But you know what? Even $25 is still accredited in God's eyes as something that you sacrificed. Amen? All right, here we are. John chapter 2, verse 13. If you're there, say amen. amen. And the Jews, Passover was at hand. See, we're one week out. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, somebody say a whip, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. And he said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence or out of here. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And another place said it shall be called the house of prayer. Here's the, another verse, key verse right here. Verse 17, And his disciples remembered that it was written, it's in the Old Testament Psalms, the zeal of thine house hath eaten 
me up. I want us to say it together. You ready? The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. One more time. The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Look at your neighbor, give him a high five before you sit down and say, you and I need to die. Come on. Go on to be seated in the presence of the Lord. Put your hands together and give God a celebration praise. Come on, a celebration. We've read a passage that somewhat depicts, and you can go throughout the Gospels, and you can begin to understand and realize that this is the day similar as we know it as Palm Sunday. It's the week before his crucifixion. I thought to myself, here he is, he's coming down through the city. He's riding on a donkey, not a white stallion. He's coming lowly and humble. Somebody say amen. And, 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 and then the people are cheering and screaming and hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And that's worthy to be said. But then the religious leaders from the temple are coming out and they, they hate Jesus. How many believes the devil hates you if you love Jesus? And, and so all this was going on. It's almost like today. It's kind of a repeat of history. People hate God. They hate Christ. Anything to do with it. Well, it was going on. But then we understand as we begin to read our passage that it was near the Passover. And Jesus is now one of the things he did that day. He began to go into the temple and he's going to cleanse. Let me put it this way. I'll break it down. He's going to clean house. There's a passage of scripture in Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken. God said, where is the house that you build under me? Now, this is a physical house, but it's still important because this is holy ground. Amen? Amen? But then again, the Bible talks about in Paul's writings that we are the temple or the house of God. Is that right? Yeah. Is that what your Bible says? He said, know ye not that ye are the temple or the house or the dwelling place for the Holy Spirit? Uh, and so you've been bought with a price. You're not your own. So we know this. This is foundation for this message right here entitled possessing the passion of Jesus. You see, I believe, and I wrote this down. Uh, if you think about it, one of the greatest keys... For you and I, in finding our purpose for God, is to be connected to the church. Did you hear what I said? Now, I'm going to teach a little bit today. But we need to be connected to the church. See, I don't want to rush it because I don't want you to leave and forget what I said. And don't forget this. They say most of the time, most people never remember more than 10% of what they hear. Hus husband's sitting next to your wives. Your wives ought to say, I know that's right. <laughs> he don't hear a thing I say. Selective hearing. But listen to what I'm telling you. I'm telling you we need to be connected if we're going to have purpose in our lives. And, and, and that's really important as part of the, because we are the body of Christ. Scripture says he's the head of the church. Can you say amen? So whatever God has placed you and positioned you in this house. He's planted you. He's not buried you. He planted you. And I believe he planted you here to flourish and to grow. And I also wrote down, when you're doing this, it's not just for yourself, but your life will minister and impact those around you. Give him praise in the house if you got point one. I'm talking about God's house, a love for God's house. Jesus was a passionate man. I almost started to name this thing passion uh, or, or, or passive. You know, if you're passive, you're just laid back, don't want to do nothing. But if you're passionate, that tells me there's a fire burning inside. Come on. And I'm not talking about the fire for the lust of the, of the flesh or the world. I'm talking about the passion for the things of God. Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God. All his righteousness, all these other things will be added unto you. Sometimes we're chasing things instead of chasing God. Now, I'm going to get there in just a moment. But I just want to tell you that in Genesis chapter 28, there's even a place where Jacob, you remember him, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 
had 12 sons. Jacob laid down in his running away from his brother who wanted to kill him because he stole his birthright. He lays down in a place called Bethel. Remember that? Put the stone under his head, fell asleep. He's a fugitive on the run. But all of a sudden, when he wakes up, after he had saw a dream of angels ascending and descending up a ladder, it's called Jacob's Ladder in your Bible. Those angels, according to Hebrews, if not the Psalms, says that the angels are ministering spirits unto the heirs of salvation. Touch your neighbor and say, he's told by me. See, everything, most of everything that you're going to get from God is going to come through the gate of heaven. Jacob awoke. He said, my Lord, I didn't realize it after he had the dream. He said, but this is the house of God. Bethel means house of God. Say that with me. Bethel means house of God. We're talking about a passion for God's house and this house. To fulfill the desire that God has for our life, we must get this house right first. You can't work your way and earn your way to have favor of God. Can I hear an amen? Amen. But it's through obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And to hearken to the voice of the Lord than the fat of rams. Brother Frank did a good job on the men's ministry of the day when he talked about how can we hear from God. He said the word. He based it the word is the main thing. And that's true because it says uh, man shall not live by bread alone or the things of this world or natural food. But by every word shall word. That proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, I'm your pastor, and I'm trying to tell you some good news about possessing the passion of Jesus. They got it up on the screen. There he is coming, the picture through the city. And in the day that they're celebrating, seven days out, after seven days pass, they're screaming, crucify him. Somebody say half-hearted. Yep, half-hearted. Oh, there's one. Somebody else say half-hearted. half-hearted. That's the way those people were in that day. One day they're for you, the next day they ain't. Anybody have known anybody like that? One minute they're talking good about you, the next time they can't stand you, look at you or anything. You know, come on. So watch this. The dream that Jacob saw the angels ascending up into bringing, I believe, the answers to your prayer and mine. Your prayers that go to heaven. God said, ask can you receive Seek, you'll find, knock, the door will be open. Now, this is important. I wrote down the dream of Jacob shows us much of what we see on earth comes through the gate of heaven because he said, this must be the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. So the angels coming to and fro, coming out of the gate of heaven. Well, that's important. Jesus said literally, mark it down. He said, upon this rock, being him, Christ, I, Jesus said, will build my church, watch this, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And you ought to give him praise right there. See, it's important you get connected to the church. It's important that you get involved in ministry. You you say, why? Well, if not, you're going to be bored with church. You'll be bored reading your Bible. You'll be bored coming on Sunday morning, Wednesday night. You'll you'll think church is a headache. But what you're doing, you're allowing the enemy to rob you of being connected to the gate of heaven. Your blessings come from heaven. The Bible said, Jesus said, even the gates of hell won't stop this church. That's my people and my children. Shout amen. Now, realize this, Jesus is is declaring this. He's saying, in essence, you need to attach yourself to the church. Brother Clay Brown just came up with uh, that SWAT team uh, message up there and said, oh, I don't like that word. Well, don't worry about the word. It's about saving souls. It's about witnessing. Come on. And you can't do it without knocking the door. Uh, uh, you, you, you got, he said, go ye. Somebody said, well, that's old school. Well, last time I looked, Jesus is pretty old then. <laughs> Matthew 28 is the great commission. Go ye into all the world. Can I get an amen? And, and, and the Bible said in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ, watch this, watch this, is the same. 
Yesterday, today, and forever. Give him praise one more time. I'm going to wear you out. This is a day of celebration. Somebody say celebrate. Huh. Well, so Jesus is telling us, attach yourself, your life, your family, your children, your business. Come on now. And he said, you're going to prosper and be blessed. I'll bless the joy of your life. How many need a little more joy? I'll bless you with peace of mind. How many has a hard time sleeping at night when you're worried about all your bills and all your enemies? Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah, you got an enemy. And we all share the same enemy, and his name is Lucifer. Come on now. But understand, point number one, if I had one, it would be the passion. I've said this many times. The passion is in the pursuit. Say that with me. The passion is in the pursuit. In other words, whatever you're passionate for, that's what you're going to chase. So, you know, if you think about what I'm trying to declare, uh, some people they just maintain and bump along in life I call that people who are sitters and spectators they just sit you know they, they, they spectate they, they don't get involved they're not connected now, now look at your neighbor and say he's not talking about us he's talking about somebody else see I'm talking about people even myself preachers can stop reading and praying and get lackadaisical and a little folding of the hands, a little slumbering of the eyes, and then I don't even need, come on. It's not about the title over the door or over an administration in the church. It's about the, the name over the heart. In other words, you belong to God. You're sold out to him. You know, so you can either be passive or passionate, I wrote down. And, and, and I don't want to just, some people just want to survive, and that's what's going to happen. If you're passive, you're just going to try to survive. Have you ever talked to people, hey, how's your life? Oh, man, man, it's been really rough. Man, oh, the devil's really been fighting me. Man, if it gets any harder, I don't know what I'm going to do. Come on. Man, the job's hard. Man, man, the wife just won't listen to me. Come on. Kids are just going nuts. Come on. You can either be passive and die, or you can be passionate and live. Raise that hand and shout yes. So you've got to realize serving God is the purpose of life. Say that with me. Serving God is the purpose of life. Somebody's running around and said, oh, I got to find myself. Really? Are you that lost? Because if you are, you need to hear the words of Jesus. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Come on. There is no life outside of Christ. You don't start living and still you, till you start breathing the life of Jesus. Oh, how many's glad you're saved today? Come on. My Lord, we sang that song, I'm free, I'm free. Oh, I was bawling over there, shouting. Man, I'm not in bondage anymore, Brother Rick. I'm free. How many's had God break some sin off of your life? Come on, come on. Oh, how, how many had addictions and God delivered you? Come on. Now, there might, there might be people here struggling with addictions. Don't you let, let yourself sit there and the devil beat you upside the head with a baseball bat. No, you just say, you know what? I'm going to listen to this word. I'm going to listen to this truth. I'm going to listen to God's word. And you know what? I'm going to lay hold on what God has for me today. I'm going to get connected to the body of Christ. I'm going to rise up instead of sitting down. I'm through with being passive. I'm going to have a person with a heart that is passionate for the things of God for the zeal of the Lord hath eaten me up yeah. now I got some scripture definition on that and I'm getting to it but you and I function you know your function might be different than mine but whatever it is musicians singers prayer warriors greeters uh, you know there's even church people that pick up things my wife does more stuff uh, and maybe there's some of you I don't know about behind the scenes you'll never hear about it she's always finding something to do because she loves God's house hello <laughs> you know how many noticed the parking lot already done it's not finished we got to try to finish it up Monday and Tuesday before it rains Wednesday but the Brandon's going to help me put the stripes so you'll know where to park. I hope you didn't go crossways out there on me today. I love God's house. Your pastor's not lazy. Come on. 
I got fathers sitting here that are not lazy. They're raising sons that should not be lazy. And I wish the men would back me up and shout, yes. Young men need to know you need to work, you need to be faithful, you need to be trustworthy, you need to have good character, and you do it all by following Christ. Be connected. I thank God for the families here that are connected. I thank God for moms and dads and grandparents that have raised your children so you stay connected to God. It's not about chasing the things of this world. It's about staying connected. You know, God don't care if you have a hobby. We got, but we got more people. They're more concerned. They're, they're, they're so passionate about baseball. Talked to a man just the other day. He, he was a minister, but he's, he's so caught up in baseball, he don't even go to church on Sunday. And he said, oh, we do a little thing at the house. Really? But the Bible said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of summer, lifestyle of summer. He said, don't be like everybody else. But he said, he, he said, exhort one another. That means to encourage one another. So much the more as you see the day approaching, he's coming back. How are you going to encourage anybody if you never show up? Okay, watch this. So I'm looking at this thing, and the text that I really took out of this was the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. I've never really preached just from that before. I've always preached the parade. I've always preached the purpose of having a donkey. If God can use a donkey to let Jesus ride, he can use you. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, he's telling me the truth. But here's what I'm telling you. The word zeal means passion. Say passion. Jesus was a passionate man. Have you ever seen these pictures? Anybody ever been to the Museum of Arts or anything? You ever seen any? You ever looked at a book and there was pictures of Jesus? You ever done that? I have. I've seen them. Historical pictures I wrote down by famous artists portray Christ many times, watch this, as laid back. <laughs> He's laid back, easygoing, always calm, nonchalant, He's passive, reserved, emotionally. No, 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 no. That's not the way it is. Turn in your Bible quickly to, uh, see, what is it? I'm thinking it's Matthew chapter 23. Yeah, go there, go there real quick. Matthew 23. Let, let me tell you, he wasn't passive. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say right now, I cannot follow somebody, whether he's got a long beard, long hair, short hair, no beard, sandals. Come on, I'm just putting it out here. I can't follow anybody that's just going to sit around a campfire, Brother Terry, all day long and do nothing. Y'all didn't like that. See, Jesus didn't do that. But pictures will portray that's no, no, never raised his voice. No, the Bible says you can be angry, but sin not. How many believe you can have a holy anger? Holy anger says, I hate the things God hates, but I love the things God loves. Give him praise right there. That is the heart of our Savior. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. So what I want to tell you is, as I understand that that word zeal means passion, and they Put these pictures out here. The Bible shows us, and I'm coming to Matthew 23, but I want to read this. Jesus, the Bible said he cast devils out. Come on. He didn't use a wand. He spoke the word. He stood face to face with people in the temple, in the church, religious people, Sadducees, Pharisees. And he, watch this, he called them vipers, snakes. My Lord, if you preach those words in some churches that take you off that pulpit and get somebody else, that would preach a user-friendly message. Don't offend anybody. Jesus was not passive. He was passionate. He was zealous. He said, I must be up and about my father's business. I can't stand it when the grass is not mowed. Come on, somebody, somebody say, that's your pastor. So that's my pastor. And I thank Brother Louie for the ministry he's doing. And some men are helping. I, I, come on. And, and, and then when the asphalt out there is dirty and we got, I got some potholes, I got to the, get them filled this way. Well, I'm passionate uh, for the house of God. As a matter of fact, let, let me just go on before I get ahead of myself. So, so he, he cast out devils. 
He, he called them vipers and snakes. Matthew 23, you could read the whole chapter. He called them fools. Let's, that sound like a passive guy. That's somebody that might get their, their clock. Come on. Uh, what do you call that? Clean your clock? Yeah. And he's calling them fools, blind guides, hypocrites, he called them. Uh, uh, he said, you strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Come on. Trying to be more religious than thou. Think you're more holier than thou. Jesus called it like it was. It was tight, but it was right. Shout amen. See, he wasn't passive, but he, uh, he was passionate. And then I, the, the Bible, your Bible called him, watch this, watch this. Oh yeah, he was a lamb. Yes, he was meek. But it, the Bible calls him the lion. Rawr! The lion of the tribe of Judah. Shout amen. He's a mighty warrior. Oh, yes, he is. And, and if I looked in scripture there, verse 13 of chapter 23, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. In other words, you won't let anybody get saved. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses and, and, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. I'll tell you what, he wasn't passive. Somebody shout he was passionate. Well, look at verse 15 in John chapter 2. I want to show you this. Let's go there. Because here's... The scripture tells us he's not passive, he's passion, passionate. How you know? Look at verse 15. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, the sheep, the oxen, and he poured out the, the changers' money and overthrew the tables. He took time. When he came into the temple and saw they were making merchandise, come on, and, and giving and exchanging money and doing everything, they, they would turn away the people's sacrifice, tell them it wasn't no good, and sell what they had from the temple. It was all kind of corruption going on in there. And, and Jesus, but he went and sat down, no doubt, because you don't make a whip in five seconds. Is that right, Frank? Uh, but Brother Louie or someone else in here does leather, works with leather. You have to go find the material. You've got to cut it if you're going to make a whip. And, and you've and you got to find some type of wooden handle. You've got to weave it together. Uh, whatever he did, he took time there at the temple or wherever. He saw it. But he didn't blow up, lose his temper. He, he had holy anger. He wasn't passive. Say, he wasn't passive. Whip. And the Bible said he came back and he ran everybody out of the house of God that was doing evil and not doing right. He cleansed the temple. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. They said there was an estimated 200 temple guards. Do you understand it, Passover? I read somewhere there was like 2.5 million people showed up at the city in Jerusalem around there. Why? All the males, I think at least 20 years old, if I'm not mistaken, they had to be there. It was just part of the Jewish custom. And Passover always represented the remembrance of deliverance. Say that with me. The remembrance of deliverance. What do you mean deliverance? When they was in Egypt for over 400 years. And we preached on the power of the blood last week. Shout power in the blood. And God delivered them. And all of a sudden now here we are. Do you understand? At this particular place, over 200 of the temple guards, all the religious leaders, all of those that sold and bought and, 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 and I, I can just say right now, I can't follow a passive person, but I could follow this guy. You know why? He was, he was coming to bring truth. He was coming to change the atmosphere, the city, the world. Come on now. He was going to turn the world upside down, and he did. Because he was passionate about his heavenly father. Do you love your heavenly father today? Oh, yeah, give him praise. I hear somebody doing something. So he took time to make the whip. He drove them out. He had a zeal for the church. For the, listen to this. When I say the church, Ephesians tells us in chapter 5, or in one place, says we are the body of Christ. 
and, and members in particular, every person breathing, if you're saved or part of the body. You know, it's amazing to me that sometimes people, you know, all they want to do is complain about the church. Come on. Church ain't doing this. Church ain't doing that. Pastor's too loud. Pastor thinks he's got to sing every Sunday. Come on. I mean, they get mad about everything. Well, if I would have done it, I would really, well, come do it. We'll let you strike the parking lot. Come on now. You see, my job's not to always make you happy, which I love to. Sometimes my job is to challenge you that you'll let God stretch you. Come on. That's how you grow. Adversity and troubles and trials will cause us to not depend on ourselves, but to trust God by faith that he'll make a way where there seemeth no way because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. We can't make it without God. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. So uh, I also wrote down here, the word passion means focused energy. Focused in your passion, focus. The, the passion is in the pursuit. What have you chasing? And I wrote down here many people get passionate about work. You ever seen a I talked to a man the other day, he said he's working two jobs, brother Frank. And then he's, he's busy with all this other stuff. He just don't, just busy, busy. How many knows you can get too busy? But he's passionate about working. Many others are too. You can be passionate about motorcycles. I know some people, they just, they got to work on that motorcycle, ride that motorcycle, breathe that, come on, they, huh? And, and then what about football, baseball? Man, we, come on, we got some fanatics in there. Don't sit there like you ain't never watched none of that. I mean, we get crazy when our team's on there, huh? But watch this, and then they, they're passionate about cars, They'll, they'll spend hours and, and they'll paint and they'll uh, redo the inside and the motor. And they're, they're passionate. They're passionate about hunting. If you ever get a hold of a hunter and know a hunter, I'm telling you, when hunting season's come, he's already packing his bag, got his gun ready, got his bow ready, whatever he's about to do. Fishing, come on. I mean, they're just passionate. And, and then, then there's people got ski boats. Soon as summer hits, they don't even come back to church. And God don't mind you having hobbies and, 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 and cars and motorcycles and if you got a ski boat I want to borrow it <laughs> but it can't come between you and God and the passion God showed us Christ who is not only passionate for the holy ground where the house and the building was but he was passionate for the people of God first God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Jesus had to lay his life down. Can you say amen? Let me try to get you out of here. In about 10 minutes, I've got an appointment today. Somebody's going to buy my meal. So what I'm trying to tell you, my question is, if, if, if people do not love God's house and they don't even love God's people and don't want to hang around, they have no relationship with, you know, they're getting bored with life because there's no life outside of Christ. So watch this. My question is, if we say to people, I want to be like Jesus, what do you mean? Because if you're saying you want to be like the Jesus I'm reading about, then you're going to have to be up and about the Father's business. Come on, give God praise. I know, I'm, I know I'm telling you the truth. And do you think preachers are passionate about praying and reading and knocking doors? And, and I know. But when I start praying, talking to my Heavenly Father, and open that Bible and I read, sometimes up to four hours I'm in study, it, I, I just get engulfed in it. What, I, the closer I get to him and the more he talks to me, tears coming down my face. You can't read the words that come from God in a time of closure and privacy. Come on, if you pray in private, he will reward you in public. Come on, shout amen. He gives you the strength, the boldness, the passion, the love to be kind and all these many things. But he wasn't a wimp. He was passionate. He had a fire of God within him. So I, I wrote down exactly what Paul told Timothy. 
He said, well, I don't have much passion. What is a way to get it back? Stir up the gift. Come on, 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy 1, verse 6 or something. that says, stir, Paul said, told Timothy, young man, young man, said, Timothy, stir up the gift that is within you that was given to you by the laying on of hands. He said, we've all got gifts. He that ascended after the cross, Ephesians said he first descended. Look it up. In the lower parts of the earth, in hell. And he, he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He kicked open that place, that cell called what they say in Scripture, paradise. Jesus talked about it when he talked about the rich man that went to hell. And yet there was a Lazarus that laid at the gate that went to heaven. He was in Abraham's bosom. He drawed the picture. But God tells us Christ, he that ascended first descended and he led captivity captive. I always got lost there. I wish it had said led captivity free, but it says captive. And then it says he gave gifts unto men being man or woman. Give God a praise and shout, I got a gift. But you got to stir it up if it's going to touch people's lives. Yes, the word passion, focus, energy. Passion is a desire, shout desire. It can be holy or unholy. We should never allow our godly desire, the desire of Jesus uh, to be more for other things and not for his people and the house uh, of, the willing, of the living God. And, and, and I can tell you this, passion for God is the willingness to go the extra mile. Come on. Somebody asks you to do something, you ought to be willing to go the extra mile. Ephesians 1.22 says I had, had, that he had put all things under his feet. God put everything under Christ's feet and gave him to be the head over all things. Watch this. To the church. That's right. He gave all power to you and I, which is his body. Shout, I'm part of the body. Now, I know that sounds crazy, and I said a moment ago, some people just want to complain about the church. The scripture said, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. But if I had a point here, it would be how you treat God's house is how God will treat your house. How you treat God's house, not just the physical and the parking lot, etc., but also how you treat your house. See, how you treat God's house is how he'll treat your house. Malachi chapter 3, 10 through 12, he said, bring all the tithes and the offerings into my house and prove me, saith the Lord. Watch this. If I will not open the windows and the gate of heaven and pour you out a blessing wherein there will not be room enough. See, if you connected and you honor him, Luke 6, 38 said, even give, shout give. Now that heard about five of you right there. It's not just your money, it's your time. Time is money if you're getting paid at a job. Am I right about it? That's what's wrong with a lot of people today. They don't want to, they don't have, they don't got time for God, but that's not right. That Bible doesn't teach that. It said, it, said, it said, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over, shall God cause men to give out of their bosom unto you. Give God praise for the blessing. Come on. I'm almost finished. So it, it, it's, not about, it's not about just giving money and having a return. It's about when you give yourself, God will in turn give you health. Come on. He'll give you joy. He'll give you peace. If he's the head of the church and he's the head of your house, you won't have to worry about having every need met because the word said, my God shall supply all my needs according, not my greeds, but my needs, according to his riches in Christ Jesus. You know, can you imagine people griping about the church though? All they want is your money. That's all that preacher wants, your money. Matter of fact, I wouldn't go to that church. There ain't nothing but a bunch of hypocrites in there. You're right, we got some. People pretending to be something they're not and hiding something they are. I said, we got some. Jesus said, let the t 
tares grow with the wheat. Don't you pluck them up. He said, I'll come. And if you got struggles today in your flesh, uh, whatever it is, hey, I'm praying for you. I'm, I'm de declaring God's going to uh, reverse the curse. Come on. I'm declaring the power of the blood is going to set you free, transform your mind, pick you up, turn you around. Come on, shout amen. To my passion. Maybe I ought to bring my rocking chair next Sunday and do the flip side of passion for God. And, and Sister Ernestine, maybe I'll just rock. <laughs> no, I won't do that. Let, let me, let, I don't even know if I got a rocking chair. I can bring, come on. Let, 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 me, let me tell you. But can you imagine, men, could you imagine if, we, if we're going to talk bad about the, the body of Christ and yet Christ, Scripture says Christ is the head and we're the body. You know, we don't need to talk about the body, one another, because if that's the case, maybe you ought to tell your wife, honey, I sure love your head. You sure are beautiful, but I hate your body the way it looks. I don't, let me know how that comes out. Yeah. You see, that's not going to work. So you don't have to talk about the body. Look at your neighbor and say, don't talk about me. Come on. Pray for me. Come on. Don't hate on me. Just celebrate me. Come on, shout amen. See, I ain't got time to be a hater. I want to be a celebrator. But I'll guarantee you, Psalms 92 verse 13. It says, those who are planted shall plant it in the house of the Lord. House of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 14, they shall still bear fruit in old age. Look at somebody over 29 and say, you're still got it. Come on. <laughs> See, just because you're 49, 59, it does not matter. God will use anybody that's available. Shall praise the Lord. He said, they shall still bear fruit in old age and they shall be fresh and flourishing. You see, if you allow God to use you and you be connected and you have passion for God. Yeah. If in your, he will, he will cause you to be fruitful in your family, your marriage. If, if you're planted, if your family's planted, then in the house of God, you, you're going to be fruitful. Come on. If your marriage is planted, you're not listening to the house in the house of God, you, your marriage is going to flourish. Shall praise the Lord. If your teenagers are planted, shall plant it in the house of God, in the house of God, <laughs> in the house of God, your, your teenagers are going to flourish. And they're going to get a job. Come on. All right. And it goes on with your business, your finances, whatever. How many are glad that your mom and dad planted you in the house of God. Come on, give your mom and dad a praise offering, grandparents. I wrote down, if you're, if you're planted in the church, it's not an option. It's a necessity and a requirement, and you're going to please God. As a matter of fact, if you're not planted and you're on the mall sometime next week, and somebody comes up and says, what's the name of your pastor, and you can't tell them, you're not planted. If your kids are going to church more than you are, you're not playing it. Come on now. Telling it like it is. If you love doing your hobby and your sports and all that more than being, you're not playing it. He has to be first. Here's another point. I don't know which one it is, but Psalms 81. Jesus loves excellence. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Psalms 8, 8, 1 says, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who has set thy glory above the heavens. You see, they even said when Jesus died that they gambled for his robe, his clothes. Come on. Well, you think, well, that ain't nothing to talk about. Well, let me ask you this. If you died, who would want to buy your clothes? I'm teasing her. You'll get that later. All right. But we need to teach our kids... And we adults can learn a spirit of excellence in everything we do. We need to dress right, look right, talk right, act right. Am I right about that? Okay, so uh, 
There's an old saying, if everybody was like me, say that with me. Say, if everybody, well, now y'all got to participate. Say, if everybody was like me, what kind of church would this be? I think you can fill in the blank. Are you faithful? Are you a tither? Do you do offerings? Are you a prayer warrior? Huh? Do you love people? Are you friendly? Think about that. See, you, you can't do it without being passionate about God and his church and his people. I wrote down, if we all showed up at work like we showed up for God's house, whether attendance or prayer or reading our Bibles or whatever. Brother Robert, I wrote down, if we showed up like we do at some of our, if we showed up at our jobs like we probably do for God, we probably wouldn't get a paycheck Friday and we probably wouldn't have a job Monday. The opposite, answer that phone, tell them I'm still preaching. The opposite of living a life of excellence, I said it well ago, somebody say it's boring. Well, I didn't get no amens there. Yeah, somebody say, it's boring if you don't live a life of excellence. People who lose their passion for God become bored with God and church. Their soul and their spirit are not happy. That's right. I said it earlier. And the devil will set you up for sin and a fall. I'm almost through. That's my third closing. You see, when you and I become cold and indifferent, and separated and bored with God and the church, then we fall into a place where the enemy will set things before us and he'll set a trap for us and we'll fall into sin. No true believer is wired to just survive. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm more than a survivor. Come on. You were designed by God for more. More what? More passion. More hunger for God. When people of God become bored, they lose their desire, their passion for God in church. They lose their excellence and it affects their relationships. They lose those in, in, with people and in their marriage and with their kids. They lose, they have an attitude. They even lose vision of heaven and why they're even on the earth. Here's my story that goes with my closing it was in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 4. Your Bible, it says, it declared that David, the king of Israel, he was a king, had everything, came from the shepherd field, barely had probably clothes on his body, but he became so wealthy and blessed by God. He was the apple of God's eye just to show you anybody can fall when you become unpassive for the things of God. He became so bored through his loss of holy desire to be in the presence of God in holy communion and under the anointing of the I am. The word said, when the time came for kings to go forth to battle, David tarried still at the palace of his house. Notice, he stated his house. He was in the palace. He stated his house. He had gold, silver, servants, everything. Well, why do I need to go to church? I got everything. Really? Well then, let me read this scripture to you. Maybe it'll be familiar. And it's found in the book of Revelations, chapter 3. When these words are unto the church, and Jesus began to declare to that particular church in chapter 3, stand your feet, I'm done. He said, I know... Thy works, chapter 3, verse 15. See, he says, I know your works. He said, thou art neither cold nor hot. But he said, I would that you would be. He said, so then because thou art lukewarm. Somebody say lukewarm. See, that's, that's passive. He said, because, because you're passive, he said, I'll spew you. One translation said, I will vomit you out of my mouth. 